Dance floors across the globe are seen as progressive spaces for connecting with a better social future. But when we talk about dance music as a forward-thinking concept, its unenvironmental practices are often overlooked. Festivals attract thousands of visitors for a few days of partying. Often held in idyllic and off-grid locations, it's easy to see how they can quickly have a significant negative impact on the environment. With the planet facing an urgent ecological crisis, the need to implement sustainable solutions is more pressing than ever. An event is actually a small city. Every aspect of life is there and you can really try new things on festivals. And if it works, you can maybe apply it in a city as well. So what can festivals do to reduce their impact on the planet? In the Netherlands alone in 2016, 21 million festival goers generated the equivalent of 23,000 households yearly waste. Waking Life in Portugal have introduced an incentive for attendees to reduce their personal litter. The garbage deposit is a pretty simple system. Participants pay 10 euros on top of their ticket. At the entrance, everyone receives their garbage bags, which they can hand in in exchange for a refund of the 10 euros garbage deposit. It's a system that has proven to work over the past two years with a very clean campsite and a general awareness to keep the entire terrain clean. Cigarette butts can take up to 10 years to decompose due to their plastic-based filters. We have ashtray tins that we started producing last year. So you stub your butt out and you put it in your ashtray. We send all the cigarette butts off to a factory in the UK when they get recycled. This is just one aspect of Meadows in the Mountains Leave No Trace approach. For the last five, six years, we have stopped using single-use plastics. We started ordering in these enamel cups and you can only get served in those cups at the bars. Reusable cup schemes have been a popular way for many festivals to take a first step in reducing their total waste. Last year, Houghton Festival introduced a scheme where punters were charged one pound extra on top of all drinks for the cup, incentivizing them to reuse it each time instead of paying for a new one. On top of their reusable cup scheme, We Love Green Festival in France installed a total of 90 drinking water taps avoiding the use of 154,000 single-use plastic bottles. Both We Love Green and Digital Festival in Amsterdam have won awards for their dedication to improving sustainability, seeing all waste as something to be reused and repurposed as part of a circular waste economy. First of all, it works that you need to know what's coming in and what's going out. So you need to look at your waste streams and then you start looking at what can I do with this waste? Can we reuse it? We said to all our caterers, OK, guys, we need to use natural materials that are biodegradable. We had a machine in the middle of our food court. All the visitors could put their food waste in it, together with the plates and everything. And it was decomposed in 24 hours. And with the compost, we grew herbs and vegetables again. This holistic approach resulted in a reduction of digital's total waste by a staggering 50% in one year. For 2019, Digital introduced a brand new menu using imperfect food from local suppliers, which would have otherwise been thrown away. They're also 100% meat-free. Global animal agriculture contributes more to climate change than the world's entire transportation industry, so this is a simple yet effective way festivals can reduce their environmental footprint. One of the ways that sustainable festivals have really come into their own is in reimagining the construction and design of their stages. Whenever we design or we plan our stages, we try to minimize our impact. All the excess material that we generate, we try to use it for secondary items such as tables, beans, showers. And in the building process, we also try to engage with students and also refugees that are invited every year to take place in formative workshops so that they assist our team in building the actual structures of the festival. The stages at Gotwood, used every year, have become strongly associated with the festival's identity. 
all stages at Gotwood are designed in-house by us guys. They're all built by hand using materials from the estate or resource from local suppliers. And all those stages go into storage each year. The Trigon, for example, which has become an iconic stage at Gotwood, was built three or four years ago now and is brought out for the festival. Each year, across Europe, about one million tents get abandoned at festivals, which mostly end up going to landfill or being incinerated. The plastic an average tent is made of is an equivalent to about 9,000 straws, or 250 pint cups. Because of activities from the likes of Sainsbury's and Tesco's, who deliberately put really cheap tent deals on offer at festival periods, we have hundreds, if not thousands, of tents left behind, which is a huge, huge issue for A, the environment, and B, ourselves, who've got to dispose of those tents. We encourage a number of homeless charities to come down and take tents away from us, and any tents that aren't taken have to go and be disposed of, which is horrible. On offer at many festivals are pre-pitched tents, eliminating the need to bring your own. But their hefty price tag means they haven't reduced the number of cheap tents being abandoned. We have a spot on the camping terrain where people can leave stuff like if they cannot take back their tent or they have food or clothes or anything basically, this will go to an organization which will give it a second life. The majority of a festival's carbon footprint is actually made up of the ways that visitors, artists and suppliers travel to and from the site. Carbon offsetting has become a popular way to improve sustainability. This involves compensating for carbon dioxide emissions by donating money to environmental projects or charities. Flow Festival in Helsinki have taken this approach since 2009 and are one of the world's first carbon neutral festivals. Their emissions from 2017 were offset by contributing to the protection of forests in Zimbabwe. As carbon offsetting doesn't encourage people to choose more sustainable means of transport in the first place, it's best implemented in combination with a range of other sustainability measures. The Train Not Plane initiative is to help reduce our carbon emissions. Whether we like it or not, 80% of our punters come from the UK and the easiest way to get there is by plane. And it's also the cheapest way, but it also has the biggest effect on the planet. We're just trying to promote people to catch the train. You know, you get to see the scenic landscapes from the UK all the way across Europe to Bulgaria, so it's pretty epic. But obviously a lot of people don't have the time to do that. We essentially encourage car sharing onto site with a company called Go Car Share. You as a customer would sign up on the Go Car Share website to advertise that you're driving they would match you guys with an appropriate driver and you'd lift share to the festival. It's really helped us and most of the cars entering site are full. With multiple stages, sound systems, lights and food vendors all needing substantial power, finding a reliable and sustainable electricity source for the entire site can be difficult, but progress is being made. What we actually did was integrate solar panel production and then storage in lithium battery packs, connected in such a way to save as much diesel as possible. On the back of his containers, there were solar panels placed, and during the daytime, the energy was stored. And then at night, we were able to shut down the diesel generator and run completely on the stored energy from the daytime. Last year we built some compost showers. There was a coil of pipes running through the compost heap and as the compost starts to break down it creates heat which then heats the water so it's completely green power that heats the showers. The examples shown here are just a snapshot of the wider sustainability schemes these festivals have implemented in response to the global climate emergency. And new ideas are being developed across the industry every year. It's innovation and you shouldn't be afraid to make mistakes. You cannot say like, okay, you do this, this and this and then your event is sustainable. You know, it's like a journey. 
Only Trump can ignore climate change, but you cannot ignore climate change. We feel the urge to let people know that you can really simply do this yourself as well. Once you start doing this, you don't want to go back because it's also fun to do. We are doing all we can to make sure that what we're doing on site is sustainable. However, we can't stop people leaving rubbish on the floor. All we can do is ask them not to. We can't expect them to come in full cars, but all we can do is ask them to. So ultimately, it's down to the people to be the most sustainable they can be, basically. If everyone raises their voice, then together we can really create a big shift. The music industry really connects to the hearts and minds of people, and I think we should bring that to good use. Yeah.